What's up, Sons? It's Blindron with Silent Tech once again. Today we're going to be looking at the stock mining performance for the XFX RX 580 GTS Edition. Now keep in mind that all of these will vary depending on what other modifications you've made, including BIOS modifications and overclocking. This will be at stock clocks with no BIOS modification, and we will be covering BIOS modification of this particular card in a video later this week. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back. So this card is kind of one of those go-to very early on, at least in the Ethereum mining days. It's very good performer, at least historically, and has the ability of drawing very low power from the wall. This makes it very appealing for most miners, and this is also why they sell above retail right now. But today we're also going to be taking a look at a couple other algorithms for the performance on this card, including of course Lira 2, Rev2, and Equihash, and CryptoNote. So once we take a look at all of those, we can go ahead and compare them and let you guys know what we're looking at. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the power requirements. If we take a look at the card, we'll see that we have a single 8-pin. Now, this is important because a lot of 580s have a requirement of an additional 6-pin, etc. So this makes this card a particular trim a little bit more appealing for mining rigs that are having 6 or more GPUs, as your power requirements, or at least power adapter requirements, will be less. This means you won't have to have as many pieces PCI power adapters coming off of your power supply. If you guys are curious about the look of the card, we're looking at a card that has a nice black backplate with an XFX logo, of course, on it. And the shroud is closed all the way around with some copper pipes popping out from the cooler. So talking about the cooler and the fans itself, we're going to be taking a look here at the fan noise right now. Once again, welcome back. So now we're gonna talk about the mining performance of this particular card. Now, one thing to keep a note of is this card has Hynix memory, and we'll be looking at another 580 that has Samsung memory later on this week, or maybe in the next couple weeks. I'd still need to go get my hands on one. They are a little bit hard to find, so there you go. But starting things off with Vertcoin, we see a pretty poor performance here as expected with 356 kilohash at 165 watts. Now the temps do stay low at 59C, but I can already tell you it's pretty much not worth it. Now, there was a nice hash version of a miner for this algorithm that was supposed to improve it, but the dev took it offline and I couldn't get my hands on it. Unfortunately, we're just not gonna be able to see what that could do or the possibilities of it. I'll keep you posted as I do see that Vercoin has tweeted they're working on their AMD optimized miner. So once that releases, we'll take a look at it and reevaluate the numbers for this particular algorithm. Moving on, we have XMR, which is going to be your Monero and coins like that and it's pulling 584 hash a second at 210 watts with a peak temperature of 76 degrees Celsius. Pretty expected here, it is looking pretty good. Of course, you can get similar numbers on the older Fury versions of the card, and of course, uh, if you have ever taken a look at the latest numbers from Vega, it absolutely wipes the board with this card. So if you're looking at this particular algorithm, you might be better off or better suited to go ahead and spend the little bit of extra money on an RX 56. I'll leave a link for that in the description as well. Next, we have Equihash at 297 hash a second. This is gonna be your Zcash, your Bitcoin Z, and et cetera algorithm. 
and it's pulling 260 watts and peaking at about 75 degrees Celsius while under load. Keep in mind that all of these fan profiles are stock fan profiles. And also the only note here, other note I would make is that that performance for EquiHash is quite low once again. So if you're gonna be looking at EquiHash, you're probably gonna wanna move away from the 580 and head on over to the green team and pick yourself up maybe a 1070 etc finally we have the big daddy the the claim to fame for the 480 and 580s and that's going to be et hash or dagger hash and i can never pronounce all of that so anyways this is going to be your ethereum coins etc pearls one of them we have a pearl pool which you can check out at coins.sonofatech.com and here it, the performance has gone down because the difficulty has gone up. So we're looking at a 22 mega hash a second at 255 watts. Now keep in mind this is stock. We're going to talk about how you can improve this a little bit later with a 75 degrees C at the peak temperature. So all of the performance here is not super impressive anymore with all the latest releases and the amount of NVIDIA support we're starting to get. So funnily enough, if we go ahead and plug those numbers in, some weird stuff has happened over the week with Crypto Night, which has put Sumo Coin super high up on the list and Electronium, which I was expecting. And we have a Sumo Coin pool at Sumo Pool or at sumo.sonofatech.com that you can go mine to and it's getting really good payout. So you might want to consider that right now. All right, so taking a look at the profitability after adding the numbers into whattomine.com, we're seeing surprisingly right now at the current numbers, of course, at stock, Sumo Coin being the most profitable with the Crypto Night algo, with Equihash coming very close at Zencash, and then as we go down, ET Hash kind of dropping a little bit below that. Now, if you're going to be doing Crypto Night on Nice Hash, you might want to take into account that it's a little bit less profitable on Nice Hash than it is if you're mining Sumo Coin directly. This is why I was giving some warning about mining to nice hash in a video I'll put in the corner up here. I hope all of this was helpful. Of course, what to mine's changing every day. So I wanna make sure that you guys understand that when I take a look at these numbers, it's on the date of that I do the video and they're always changing. It's a volatile market and that's just the nature of the beast right now. What you need to focus on more is going to be the numbers in the initial portion of the video, which is going to be the hash rates, etc. If you are interested in the BIOS flashing, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If this video is helpful, hit the like button. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday.